To talk us through the implications of Musk's comments, Hatem Diab from Gerber Kawasaki is joining us live from Los Angeles again. Hatem, thank you so much for staying up late and coming to talk Tesla <laughs> with us Aussies down here who, who really do love Tesla. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Great. Well, so fantastic. Let's run through some of the, the outcomes or some of the comments that came out of the shareholder meeting. And it looks as though Elon is again talking about those new products, those new EVs in that uh, sub 25,000 US category, which is really important, particularly with the Chinese pushing hard to, uh, you know, compete at those lower price points. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, everyone was speculating that Tesla is going to have uh, an EV that is sub $25,000, which is basically a mass produced car. Uh, today, we, we heard that there may be actually two cars, uh, maybe a potentially a smaller kind of uh, SUV and then maybe a hatchback. Uh, again, this is speculation, but I, I, I know we know that it's going to be two, and we know it's going to be about five million units for each. So, if you want to get to that twenty million cars by twenty thirty, this is how you get there. So, this is super exciting. Is it much Elon trying to um, talk up the Tesla story, um, given that macro conditions are pretty? pretty challenging at the moment um, and the market really wants, particularly the analysts, want to see more substance around these claims that he keeps making. Yeah, I mean, that's been an issue with Elon a lot. He, he talks a big game, but also he's someone that you don't bet against. I think if you've seen what he's done from Tesla to SpaceX, you know, he's been able to execute. Maybe his timelines were not right on point. But the, the, he, he assembled a fantastic team around him and he sets great goals and he usually gets there. So I think what's exciting right now is that we know it's happening and we know it's going to happen soon. Okay. Did he flesh out any details about which geographic location would be the, the launch pad in terms of creating these new cars? Uh, well, he's been courted everywhere. Uh, he just came back from France. Uh, Macron kind of rolled the red carpet for him yeah, two days ago uh, for the Choose France initiative. So we can probably anticipate either a gigafactory or, or another factory in France. Uh, they already announced uh, one in Mexico uh, that's going to probably produce the lower end cars for both the U.S. and, 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 and Latin America. Uh, but they're probably going to need to open at least five to, to seven new factories in the next five years. So uh, we'll see probably one in India as well. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a few locations, maybe one in Australia. Oh, yeah. No, we closed down our car industry a while back. I'm not sure it's necessarily going to come here, unfortunately. I think it would be a good thing. Um, there's been some board changes um, which are quite interesting. Could you just run through in, to, in terms of um, who's been appointed to the board and possible implications of people replacing Musk at some point in time down the track? Yeah, one of the issues with Tesla is, is really succession planning. Elon is really kind of was the only game in town for a long time. And as a shareholder, we always want to see a succession plan. We always want to see who's next in line. And today they appointed J.B. Strawwell, who used to be the CTO of Tesla uh, many years ago. And then he left and started his own company uh, that does uh, EV recycling. Uh, he is uh, uh, largely seen as a kind of a steady hand, a very smart guy, very successful. And he was appointed to the board today. So he can be potentially a successor. Uh, I like the CFO, Zach uh, Kirkhorn. Who, uh, who, who, who has been the CFO of Tesla for the last four to five years. Very young, super sharp, also acts as a COO uh, in, in many ways. So now we, we know that there's a, there is a, a lot of very smart and, and very capable um, managers and, 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 and really executives that can take the reins should they need to. Absolutely. 
Given that um, Elon's kind of been his own worst enemy in the, since the, the Twitter takeover for many shareholders, and he is outspoken, um, which was quite interesting because in that interview, he basically said he's going to say whatever he wants to say. But nevertheless, yeah. do you think there were, has been a change of heart um, from Musk by virtue of the fact that he was happy to give a big interview with a major yeah. um, you know, uh, TV or a large media company? I mean, that's very well said. He's been his own worst enemy. Last year, it was really tough for us uh, shareholders and seeing him kind of creating all these these issues around him. Uh, yeah, given given the interview to CNBC today was was huge, right? Like he had this all these issues with the with with the mainstream media, and today is almost like a peace offering. And the interview was very comprehensive. Uh, he he had some some hard questions, and he was very candid. And I think this is uh, the new Elon. Like he's, he's, he understands that he needs to play nice with, with, with the general media if he wants to sell cars. Uh, there is not, nothing positive from alienating people and supporters by, uh, by saying some things that, you know, that, that they don't like just, just simply because that's what he thinks. So I think, uh, I think today was, was a peace offering that, uh, that, that would be very, very welcome. Yeah, really interesting because he said, I'm going to say whatever I want to say and I don't mind losing money. But I think possibly maybe that's not always the case. So uh, just in terms yeah. of because um, Tesla's had a very specific uh, marketing model, which anyone that's tried to buy one or has bought one, you know, you order directly and they've never had advertising. But it seems right. like there's a change of heart there with Musk. Can you elaborate in terms of what advertising programs they may be considering? Yeah. So Tesla was the only car company in America where you can you actually buy directly through the manufacturer, directly to the consumer, which was never happened before. Uh, and, and they've never advertised, you know, and they've reached the, you know, they sold, I think, 4 million cars total without, without ever having to buy an ad or, or, or even advertise. It was mostly, uh, you know, uh, ear, to, ear to mouth and, and people really loving the products and telling their friends and so forth. You know, but you reach the scale where now it's no longer a small company, right? The, the Model Y is going to be the best selling car in, 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 in the world. Like, Car, not just EV, but car. So, in other words, now we have we have to increase that that access, or at least tell the story better. And advertising can help us do that. Advertising will ab will, will enable us uh, or Tesla to really kind of tell about the amazing features that the cars have, and, and really increase that adoption from let's say eight or nine percent uh, by EVs now to the ninety percent that buy uh, ICE cars.